Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, you're listening to or watching uh, the Service Business Mastery Podcast. And I'm here. I'm your host, Turks Blissett, and sitting virtually next to Joshua Crouch, my co-host. And uh, I feel like this is like the 100th episode we've done today. Uh, but <laughs> in reality, this is episode three. And if you have watched all three episodes, kudos to you. I will give you a... Whatever this fr- book right here. Whatever free domain. thing you have from all the shows you go to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you one of those AHR bags that I have with all the gadgets <laughs> in it. <laughs> nah. uh, we're going to talk about extended warranties uh, for equipment and how, well, one of the things with extended warranties is how, how it separates you from the competition. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to talk about why uh, what you don't know can hurt you. Uh, when it comes to the extended warranty world. Um, and uh, so we have Trinity warranty with us here on the show today. I'm not super familiar with Trinity, but um, Josh, you, you said that you are correct. Yeah. So um, two HVAC companies ago, I, we, we used, uh, well, we sold uh, through Gustav Larson, we sold American standard equipment and that's one hmm. of their, their partners. So they, they use the Trinity warranty program. And we always like, as we leveled up our packages for people and went to the higher end equipment, we always included extended warranties with that stuff and purchased them through Trinity and Gustav Larson, because we always wanted to, you know, it's like anything else in business. You want to stand out and have something you want to try to get people to go to your better product because you know, a, they're going to be happier. B, they're not going to have any problems. And if they do, it's covered. You Mm -hmm. don't have to worry about a thing. And that's what we always try to do is get people into those systems with those extended warranties. Do you ever find that people wanted like your, yeah, you're up North. Y'all can sell like 10 seer stuff still. Uh, <laughs> <Ten> <laughs> seer. <laughs> do you ever find like the, the 13, 14 seer stuff um, that they, they would want the extended warranty, like the 10 year. They try, but that's the thing with that 13 seer stuff. So 13 seer right now until the new DOE update, then I think it goes to 14 here. Um, but with 13 here, we wouldn't offer the extended on the 13. It would always be like 14, 16, 18, 20, I think is what we had. Mm-hmm. Um, we would, we would start offering extended warranties on those because the whole purpose was to get them out of the base package or the builder package, if you will, yeah. into something that's going to be better for their home. Because mm-hmm. we all know that single stage equipment, people are going to complain because it, it starts Not and stops and they never, yeah. they never get comfortable. Yeah. If they go with a, at least a two stage, we know that that's going to bring an additional level of comfort. So let's do that and pair it with an extended warranty mm-hmm. because that extra investment, it's, in it, it's a pretty sizable investment for somebody to make. Yeah, very. So true. that's what that's what that's what we did. Tell me this. So this is completely off topic for what we're talking about today on today's episode. Uh, but if you've ever listened to an episode of this podcast, you know that this is the something I do sometimes. Uh, <laughs> have you ever heard of anybody who, when they're creating their prices for their equipment, they just do like a flat, let's call it $4,500. Like, so like no matter what tier their equipment is, they're making the same amount of money on it instead of it being based on percentages, uh, their margins on percentages. Well, I think a lot of people make that mistake. That's why we see all these group chats about pricing and what are you doing and how do you calculate like, margin pricing and stuff like that still is a concept that people are still like it, it's like eye-opening like what you, really you make so, so you make more money on the higher end equipment yeah we do we have more risk too and a lot of times that stuff takes longer to set up because now we got extra controls and wires mm-hmm. and stuff like that with the communicating equipment so uh, i would uh we, we always put a margin on it. We kept the same. It was hard for me at first when I first learned that because I wanted to lower the margin a little bit because I'm like, oh man, that price is really yeah. high. <laughs> on the high end stuff. Yeah, I've seen it. And that I'm like, Ooh, and then it, yeah. it's, at a certain point, you're just like, you know what? It is what it is. And this is the price. We got to make the same margin so we can cover our overhead and then have these expenses so we can go build our business. And yeah. it takes a little bit. Like you really got to trust. You just got to trust that this is going to work out and, and, People have done it before, so it, yeah. you're not the first one. <laughs> you're not reinventing the wheel. I'm no. super excited to have uh, Gus and uh, Rich are on the show uh, today, and we're going to talk a little bit about extended warranties. And uh, yeah, so let's get started with the show. Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven-figure revenue mark? 
Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Hey, welcome to the show, Gus and Rich. Hey, Tersh. Hey, Josh. Good to be here. (laughs) How are y'all today? Doing good. We're doing well. Good, good, good. So tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, about what you have going on before we get started. Sure. Uh, so um, my name is Gus uh, Vasilopoulos. I, I'm working uh, at Trinity Warranty. Been here for a little over two years. Uh, my background is uh, a marketing. So I've spent uh, probably before I came to Trinity a good, maybe uh, it's been seven years before then uh, in marketing. And before then I was more in the finance uh, accounting, but uh, transitioned to to marketing. So I've uh, been with Trinity for two years uh, and uh, we're going to talk a bit about uh, extended warranties. Uh, they're, that's their street name, but they're actually extended service agreements. That's the oh. formal, uh, I guess, n- name for them. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, Rich has this different background than me. Rich, tell us about yourself. <laughs> well, as you can see, I'm the old guy. So mm-hmm. I have been around the industry for quite a while. Um, many, many moons ago, I actually started as a helper when I was in college. Um, and I have worked uh, with a uh, contractor and uh, was a commercial account rep, um, actually was part owner of a HVAC trade school. And oh, cool. so kind of a, and then a lot of experience here with the extended warranties, extended service agreements. Uh, I've been at Trinity here for seven years. And so kind of a very diverse background in HVAC, um, So I have a lot of interesting perspectives and uh, I like to think of myself as having worked in the field with a contractor. um, I understand the day-to-day challenges uh, of operating a contracting business and how the extended warranties can play a part in helping that. Rich, I got a super important question to ask you. So it's been eating at me since you told me you're from Chicago. Are you a Bears fan? Yeah, but I mean, there's not much to cheer for right now. <laughs> the so bear, you the Bears are selling like oh. me. You probably hate us Packer fans. <laughs> well, all all I know is we're subservient to Aaron Rodgers. He told us that he he owns you guys, man. That's what he said. He owns you guys. So well, with you that, didn't you didn't realize he was a part owner of the team, did you? With that fifty million a year that he's getting, he could probably buy part of the Bears. He could probably buy me too. <laughs> Oh, Jim said easy on the airs. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, let's talk about um, the things that we should know about the extended service agreements or extended warranties uh, and the things that we don't know that, that could possibly hurt us. Uh, sure. Rich, did you want to maybe hop in here? Let's talk a little bit about setting the tone as far as the some of the audience that maybe doesn't know what these are. Yeah. And, you know, some of the things that, uh, you know, we want to kind of lay the groundwork before we start telling them. You know, some, some of the basics, I mean, ultimately the extended service agreement uh, complements the OEM's warranty. So, you know, pretty much all residential equipment will come with a, a minimum of a 10 year parts warranty. Mm-hmm. And our product, what it does, you know, and contractors, they may include a, a 90 day labor a one-year labor on their workmanship. Um, what our product does is basically gives them the opportunity uh, to h- purchase a 10-year labor and offer their customer a fixed cost solution for 10 years. So that if they have a compressor that goes out in year seven, not only is the compressor covered by the OEM, but the labor to replace that compressor is covered by the extended warranty. So, Rich, let me ask you a question real quick. Sure. How often do you, because I don't know, this is something that I feel like in our industry, it's a, a, ignorance is bliss. It's probably the best way to say it. 
people assume when they hear that they got a 10 year warranty and it's a 10 year manufacturer warranty that there's the assumption that uh, that includes the labor. And right. then after, after a year or 90 days and they need something repaired and then all of a sudden they have to pay out of pocket. They're like, wait a minute. I thought that this covered my extended warranty. Like my warranty was included all this. And then also like, let's say that it's within a year and it's a refrigerant needs to be added to it. And the refrigerant's not covered under a manufactured warranty. And then they're like, wait a minute, that's a part, blah, 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 blah. And so like, do you, how do you, do you see that as often as I feel like it's probably there? Uh, I don't know. You know, you what you, what you're bringing up, I think is uh, more uh, standard than you think, because, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're selling that system to your customer, basically you're telling them, okay, it's got a 10 year parts warranty. What your customer has heard is it's got a 10 year warranty. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they, and, and contractors do their best at trying to put it uh, on their proposal or, you know, any kind of sales document that they're signing that it's just 10 years of parts. Uh, but ultimately the customer hears they've got a 10 year warranty. Mm -hmm. And how it plays out, Tersh, is like you had mentioned, you know, all of a sudden the compressor goes bad in year seven. The contractor yeah. walks in, tells their customer, hey, you have a bad compressor. Um, the good news is it's covered by the OEM. The questionable news is you have to pay me $1,000 to replace it. And that's when the interesting conversation starts, <laughs> you know, because the customer goes, wait a minute. Now you said I had a 10 year warranty mm -hmm. and the contractor will go, well, well, no, no. I said you had a 10 year parts warranty. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, there's negotiation because the contractor doesn't want to upset his customer. Right. So that thousand dollars becomes 800 or 750. Now we take the same scenario. Uh -huh. with the extended warranty product and the contractor walks in and says, okay, I have bad news. Your compressor is bad, but the good news is the compressor part is covered by the OEM. The labor is covered by your extended warranty. There's nothing out of pocket you need to spend. Yeah. That I feel homeowner like, has a smile. Oh yeah. And, and I feel like whenever you have the conversation with them about like whenever you're selling the system to them, when you're offering uh, system replacement options and you have the extended warranty on there. And at that point, if they decide to remove the extended labor warranty and then seven years later, obviously I don't remember what I did yesterday, much less seven years ago, but it's easier to have the conversation like, Hey, look, I offered you this extended labor agreement. Uh, and you declined it at that time. And especially if you could show records of them declining it, uh, and then that's a little bit easier. You don't have to really negotiate the price of the labor at that point because it's legit, like what you said. But we're also we're also going with the fact that the average person lives in a home for seven years. And so at the eight or nine year mark, a lot of times they it's not the original homeowner. Is that trans is that service agreement transferable or is that is it gone at when the original homeowner moves? No, the, the Trinity product is transferable. Okay. So as if there's uh the home is sold, the new homeowner can get the agreement transferred to their name uh as long as they basically contact us within 90 days of the sale. Gotcha. So one of the things we even tell you know, we tell a contractor uh even that they can tell the homeowner is basically uh, that extended uh, service agreement is an asset because when someone is buying a home, um, if they're thinking, well, uh, they will be concerned about the mechanical systems. Mm -hmm. And so basically they'll be saying, well, you know, I don't like the way this looks or whatever. Um, you know, this is an eight year old unit. I wish it was a brand new one. You know, that basically the person selling a home can say, Hey, You've got another two years worth of coverage. If there's something that goes wrong, you're covered. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like that 100%. That, that peace of mind, for because a lot of people don't realize the the cost of moving into a house. Josh, yeah. he's about to experience that firsthand. Uh, 
And uh, but one of the things is you get into a new house and then all of a sudden you have to replace the air conditioning unit. It's going to be 10, 15, 20,000 dollars, whatever it is. And uh, you have that extended warranty. It's just an extra uh, layer of peace of mind for sure. Is there what you guys recommend as far as during the sales process of <clears throat> promoting this in a way that the communication is a little more clear and concise? So that way it does like you you can take and add your offer to their product and make it stand out and make it differentiate that contractor or are there any recommendations or things that you guys have that you, you train contractors on or help them kind of understand a little bit better? Yeah. Rich, if I could take this one. No, please, please do. <laughs> yeah. So I think a big part, and I've seen some of your podcasts, some of the folks that you've had on um, where they speak to, you know, empathy and really trying to get a, um, make a bond with a customer and not yeah. just like, Hey, I'm trying to throw a system in and then get your money and have a good, you know, have a good day, you know, <laughs> and yeah, speak for yourself. But you know, you, you do a lot of work around, you know, branding yourself as a responsible caring company. And, and when you put a package together, it's, you know, some people, and we'll speak to the two ways that I see contractors kind of doing this. Uh, they, they feel like it's their responsibility to make sure the kind of scenario that was just described never happens from the standpoint of, Hey, I never want to be in a position where I'm arguing with my customer that the warranty that they, that came with the manufacturer is not going to take care of their, uh, you know, take care of their labor. And you know how that is. If you get a bad review, somebody saying, Hey, this guy, I remember one of the podcasts, they said that 50% of the feedback that they get from uh, HVAC contractors is that the thieves or that, you know, they're, 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 they're rotten oh, or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. And and that's just another reason for that sentiment to kind of uh, perpetuate. Right. And this really the contractors, you know, they approach it with different, uh, you know, strategies. But the one that we see and the one that we feel is, is the most successful is that they they make that part of their product. Uh, that being said, they don't say that, hey, you know what, we're going to put in this system uh, and we'll good, better, best you on the warranty. You do three year, five year, 10 year or, or whatever you may want to offer. Uh, they just say, this is the way we do business. Like, yeah. you know, we're going to put in a system, you know, you're going to dish out, you know, 10, 15, like you said, 20 grand, you're going to finance it. And we're going to make sure that, that you're covered. I mean, it's, we're looking out to make sure you're not going to have to dip in your pocket for $1,500 or $1,200, you know, four years down the line, because, Hey, you know what? Sometimes the manufacturers make mistakes too. Right. So they'll give you a compressor, but I mean, is it your fault that you got to dish out 1200 bucks for the labor? <laughs> you know what I mean? So you, you really kind of seal that, that empathy and that looking out for the customer to make sure that, hey, you know what, I'm looking out for your long term kind of comfort. Right. So the one way I would say is that customers, they just brand themselves that way. And they mm -hmm. say, listen, you know what? Yeah, we might be uh, or they may tell you, hey, you know, you're about a few hundred or a thousand or whatever the pricing, you know, you're going to do as far as margin more than my com competition. But, you know, you speak to the fact that, hey, you know, you stack the value as far as being there for them long term. Right. And that really sets them apart uh, as a way of doing business. Not so much, hey, this product's better or that product's better or this tier or whatever. It's like, hey, we just feel that this is the way we got to do things. I mean, mm -hmm. imagine, you know, you put a, you put a system in on in your, in your brother's house or something. And he's like, hey, Turish, man, you just put in a system and you broke down a year from now. You're going to go there. You're going to take care of them. I mean, you know, they just, uh, that's son of a gun. He's lucky <laughs> if I don't burn his house now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, and it really just like you were talking later on when you when you go to that home seven years and they're covered. I mean, they're, they're talking you up, right? They're, they're, they're giving you another review. They're, they're just, you know, they're going to town telling people, man, you can't believe this, man. My, my, my compressor brew, it was, it was, it was a hot day and, and uh, I'm done. I mean, they came out, they took care of everything and that was it. You know, it's an experience that, that really goes into your brand and it, it really helps kind of set you apart. Like you were saying, Josh, now th that's the one avenue. The other is the good, better, best model, right? So you, you walk into the, the home and, you know, the, there's different ways to go about it. So we do offer different years of coverage. So you can, you can do a two year, a three year, a five year, a 10 year, right? It doesn't have to be 10 years with everything that you sell. And you can go, uh, you know, walk into the room with different models and attach different uh, labor warranties to those models or optionality on every tier if you want. Right. Oh. Uh, we try not to, 
tell the customer or the contractor exactly the way they should do it, right? Because yeah. everyone has their own kind of, uh, they have their own consultants and they have their own advisors and they have their own way of doing business. But what we do is at least explain to them what we've seen in the market. Uh, and, and what they can do is, you know, when they open up that uh, book that, that kind of goes through the different options, or if they're using an iPad, they can add, you know, a screen or an option where they say, hey, here's, a, here's, a, here's another option, right? You could do a three year with a system, a five year or 10 year. Uh, and then, like you said, Tersh, as far as the, uh, you know, if somebody d doesn't take them up on it, or, or if you've included it, and then they're really adamant about getting it off, yeah. You know, getting off their invoice. Well, you do that, but you have a record saying, hey, my cu my customer, you know, picked it up. If I can yeah. interject something and, you know, Gus has been kind of humble here. Um, <laughs> one of the things that Trinity also offers is uh, Gus works with our digital mar marketing and we have a contractor portal that he has tools that training tools that the contractor can use and some videos that they can basically take and incorporate into their presentation to their end user and help to explain um, the extended service agreement product, sometimes better than some of their salespeople can. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice addition. Yeah, what that does is that helps you, like I've seen this said before, when somebody's trying to get a price from you, it helps you stack the value first, let them know what they're getting. Like here are all the repairs that could happen. These are the costs that you could be seeing down the line and well, these are all covered, right? And it's not a deductible, it's not a calling Trinity up and getting approval, it's it's broken. There's a work order signed by the customer and then you know we take care of the customer. I mean the contractor. So the homeowner is not going to have to fiddle with anything, right? It's, yeah, it's, really, it's not like a home warranty that, that right, we've right. Dealt it, with. We've dealt yeah, with. <laughs> you know it really gives the power to the contractor to, to use the product how they you know how they feel it's best for them. We we equip them with every different like best practices you could say, mm -hmm. uh, but but we really leave it up to them. And then there's the hybrid, right? There, there's some contractors. What they'll do is they'll come in with a three year. Like that's the way we do business three years on everything or five years on everything. And then they'll offer, Hey, you know, you could do an additional five years, uh, uh, wow. for an additional cost. Right. So, so, so we've seen, we've seen that as well. As a matter of fact, I remember one of them, this is one of Rich's, uh, uh, accounts. They actually started out with the five year and they were sick of dealing with what was kind of described in earlier where the customer would be like, Hey, you know what? I thought I was covered. And they said, listen, we're not going to sell anything but 10 years. They, 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 they upped it to 10 years and said, like, this is just the way we do business. We're not going to hassle and haggle with people because, you know, they had actually had a bad year. I forget which, uh, you know, which systems they were putting in. And, and Oh, they, I think it might start with a Y and end with a K. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they, they had bad coils. They had bad, they had bad coils. And, and I mean, they were, they were uh, you know, 70 some coils they did that year. Oof. And, you know, if they didn't have a warranty... You know, yeah, they got the they got the new coil, but the customers were were hurting for that for that service. Well, I, I think that's an important point too, because the, every manufacturer has had batches where they have problems. Mm -hmm. Every single one, the, mm -hmm. different coils, TXVs, on and on and on. This helps protect you too as a business, because one, the headache, the anxiety, the stress of trying to deal with all the customers with these problems, and then also trying to collect from them and then, you know, and, and maybe we want to segue into, cause I know George well, also, had, yeah. had a question here with what George is, has a question about too. Uh, one of the things that I will say that it also would help with in uh, we've had conversations in the past on the podcast about this and that is a uh, client retention at, at the same time. It, it kind of puts almost an invisible handcuffs on you on the client with you. Like, obviously they could go like they could get the, extended warranty transferred to someone else if you were providing bad service. Uh, but if they like, they would stay with you as the, as the contractor throughout that entire process. And, and for us, we, we, I don't know if, if y'all do or not, but we require um, ten, uh, uh, maintenance agreements throughout that, that process. Uh, is that something that you, that, that you require as well or. Rich, why don't you take this one? Yeah. You know what? Um, uh we prefer that there is a maintenance agreement in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it is not mandatory, 
but the goal is basically to incorporate the maintenance mm -hmm. agreement along with uh, the extended warranty uh, for a number of reasons. You know, number one, um, obviously with the maintenance agreement, the equipment is going to run more efficiently over time. And it just gives you more opportunities to get into the customer's home. Mm -hmm. uh, and continue to build that relationship. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's hard to swallow the pill of uh, they have six Siberian Huskies with hardwood floors and the return is on the ground mm -hmm. and the air handler is right there and then never had a maintenance agreement. It's 11 years old or it's uh, eight years old and there's blower wheels gone bad magically and it's never had an air filter in it. <laughs> I'm surprised. Well, no, Church, they changed the air filter the day before you come out. Yeah, right. right. I just changed it. I don't know what the problem is. I, I, obviously, we've never dealt with anything like that. Yeah, no, right. of, course not. of course not. You know, one of the reasons I brought up that whole contractor portal and the tools available is, once again, from being in the field, uh, what you discover is salesmen don't sell what they don't know how to sell. That's true. There's, you know, if, yeah. if, uh, if there's a new product that a contractor brings on board, there's always, you know, the tech meeting and the sales guy meeting once a week. And usually the company comes out and talks to those techs and those salespeople about the products and about the benefits and tries to give them the tools so that they can uh, explain it to the customer, you know, the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, once again, having worked for a contractor, sometimes people walk out of those meetings and going, I'm never going to do that. And, or I don't know how to do that. I don't feel comfortable with that. And so having that whole contractor portal, as well as something that they can download into that presentation, takes away some of that anxiety. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you know what? I want to speak to that um, you know, service agreement. You may not have, or the homeowner may not choose to use the contractor for that you know, that service agreement, but they're required to do their own service if they're not going to use you. So that's kind of a, that, that goes with the manufacturer's warranty as well. I mean, within the manufacturer's warranty, it says, Hey, we expect a B and C, right. As far as maintaining your system. So, uh, most homeowners, when you, you know, before you leave, you leave their house, you, you know, obviously you want to get that maintenance agreement. You, you let them know the expectation that the manufacturer has, like, you know, you got to do these 12 things, you know, you can do them. Most can't, or, you know, don't want to, and then, you know, they'll say, yeah, I can handle that. At least then they know what the expectation is, right? So that they don't, they're not surprised if like your example, you know, there's, there's a, there's a ball of, uh, of, of hair in the blower motor and they're like, Hey, you know what? The, yeah. The filter's clean, but <laughs> what's, what's going on here. Right. Mm -hmm. Or there's like three inches of cottonwood on the uh, condenser outside and it's like, <laughs> Hey, you know, or they never removed the cover uh, <laughs> for, for when, when summer came along. Uh, from the one that they had. So yeah, it's, I mean, it, it does, uh, your general maintenance needs to be there, right? Right. For, for this, for this to kind of, for this to kind of work. And, and, and it helps, like you said, to, you know, kind of talking to the customer about, Hey, this is what we do with this maintenance agreement. It's not just another way for us to, you know, get some more money out of you. We're, we're, oh, yeah. we're taking care, we're taking care of your system. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to talk about this uh, question that George kind of put up here. Yeah. Uh, so, the, the nice thing about these programs, it, it provides the flexibility to the contractor to pick their reimbursement rate, right? So if a contractor is, is, uh, is at a certain level, uh, we have reimbursement rates from $75 up to $150. So if, if a contractor, you know, is, is okay with $75 and in their market that that's what's going, then that's what they pick. And then if, if, if they're looking for, for a higher reimbursement, they can, they can go up to $150, right? And Here's here's one of those what you don't know <laughs> can't hurt you is is when you talk to you know companies like us uh, you, you'd want to find out well what's that reimbursement actually look like you know th there are some companies out there that that may claim to have a higher reimbursement rate like let's say they they're giving you uh, eighty five bucks instead of seventy five right mm -hmm. so that that's a product of of two things so at least to find out how much money I'm getting in my pocket for the service call. It's a product of the reimbursement rate and then how many hours are allotted for a repair. So just to give you an example, uh, let's say a capacitor blew. You know, you go to the home and for whatever reason that capacitor is gone. Uh, you know, the one company could pay you $85 an hour for, you know, the repair, but they only pay you a half hour for a capacitor repair. So now you're looking at, and there's usually a trip involved too. So you're like, okay, 
this company, uh, they're at $85 automatically like, oh, this is more reimbursement than the $75 tier. But then you actually do the math and you get half an hour for the repair and you get $65 trip. And then you're looking at, you know, and then some, some parts launch, you're looking at 130 bucks to roll a truck, which is nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for us, for instance, the, the bottom tier of, uh, you know, the $75 reimbursement, you get one hour trip, one hour for the repair and then a, a parts allowance. So you, you get $185 for that, you know, capacitor change out. So let me ask you about that. So how, how, as a, as a contractor, how are we supposed to be able to, how do we, how do we know the difference? Like how can we compare these things when we're trying to select an extended warranty provider? Yeah. And this, this is a, uh, you, you asked the right questions. Okay. So one is obviously, you know, what is the different types of coverage? And what is the pricing for that coverage? So that's the upfront cost, right? But then on the back end, there's usually a program guide that that describes the, the function of that uh, extended service agreement, right? So me, when I when I talk to a contractors, you know, we'll go over the 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 cost, but we also talk about the reimbursement. And usually what the contractor is looking for is like a high low, you know, simple repair, capacitor, contactor, you know, whatever. You know, what's that gonna net me at the end of the day if I pick, you know, this reimbursement level? Right. And then on the high end, you know, it's a compressor. It's a, uh, you know, it's an evaporator coil. You know, what's that going to net me? Right. And they kind of know what they expect to get for those. Right. This is their business. So, you know, if it's if it's let's say at the let's just pick, a you know, one hundred twenty five dollar reimbursement level, you know, you get the same uh, hours for the repair. You get the one hour for the repair, one hour trip and then a parts allowance of thirty five bucks. So you get two eighty five for a uh, contactor change out. Somebody can look at that and say, you know what, that. That, that works for me, right? It works for, for my market, for what I'm trying to do and how I'm trying to do things. And then on the high end, you know, if it's a compress, uh, uh, excuse me, a, uh, a compressor or an evaporator coil, you got to pull out, you know, we pay four hours uh, for the uh, repair, one hour trip. And then we also give an additional hour because you're going to have to pull, you know, open up a sealed system, pull a vacuum uh, and then the, the uh, parts allowance. So then you're looking at, you know, close to, uh, what's that going to be, 785 right for for that type of repair and then you know you kind of have an idea of hey this is where i want to be right or you want to go to the 150 you know everyone has their own kind of uh you know way they want to do business right and, and, and you pick a plan that works for you and then uh <clears throat> that's that from, from from understanding you know when you're looking at one company or another or even a manufacturer uh you know you got to make sure it fits your business model a lot of the you know manufacturers try to make you fit into their kind of set up right so we, we we try to give the optionality to the contractor to be able to to build it the way he he sees fit for his company and then there's the other question you could say right it's like okay uh obviously the higher the reimbursement the more the cost it kind of makes sense right so some contractors say listen uh i'd rather make that on every sale right i'd rather make that extra three four hundred bucks that i'm going to pay you for the you know the additional reimbursement rate i like i'd like to make that on the sale because the reality is maybe i'm not going to get that claim because you know i'm not going to need to i'm not going to get a yeah. good job installing it well there's only a certain percentage too that are going to have any problems right especially if they yeah. have a maintenance agreement and you require a maintenance agreement or something like there's things that you can probably do to offset having those issues later on so mm -hmm. you know your failure rate maybe is one or two percent and now you, you know, you're really not worried too much about coming back to something that is under warranty because you got it up front. If that homeowner, like right now, like, so I'm full disclosure. I didn't tell you guys before the show. I'm moving to Arizona mm -hmm. and people are like moving houses like every two to three years down there because the house values are like ridiculous. And so people that bought houses two years ago are now selling. And so anything that they, they got installed, like, it's you know, their warranties and all that stuff are going with them or they're being voided or whatever. Um, but a lot of people are moving, they're moving from different, you know, house to house or, or if they're remote, they can move to like myself, I can move to a warmer climate. <laughs> so I'm not <laughs> stuck inside for six months a year. Um, so stuff like that, where you can kind of, there's so many factors that it really like worried about the, the, a little bit of price here, a little bit of price there. At the end of the day, sometimes you're almost over analyzing something that just like, let's, let's find a plan I'm comfortable with. Let's make sure I know the details like you're talking about, the details behind the repairs so I know what, exactly what I'm getting, make decisions and start selling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the last thing, uh, and we got, we, we've we been talking really for a while. I didn't realize it. Um, the So 
refrigerant, how does that even work? Because it's it's different. Even like in the manufacturer realm, uh, like there's certain things where it's like, oh, well, refrigerant's not covered on that repair. And that's even though it's a part um, on the uh, in the system. Yeah. So for 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 the uh, the extended service agreements, that that also holds true. So refrigerant wouldn't be covered. Uh, so what I when a contractor hears that, like, ah, you know what, refrigerant's going up. You know, I'd like to get something for it. Right. Uh, so what I always say is, hey, listen, think of the reimbursement that you would need to get to cover that refrigerant. So just just kind of quantify that when you're picking your reimbursement rate. So if you're saying, hey, 100 bucks is where I want to be, but you know, refrigerant isn't there. Well, where do we need to be so that refrigerant, the cost of refrigerant is factored into the reimbursement, right? So I would say, go ahead, uh, Rich. Yeah, let me interject something, okay? Um, and I just a correction here. We do cover refrigerant in the case of a burnout or a leak. So oh, okay. those are covered by the agreements. But if, if it some, can be recovered and reused, then, right? Then, yeah. then it's not covered. If yeah, the yeah. refrigerant is not contaminated and they're just replacing a TXV or whatever, then basically what we're anticipating they're going to do is recover it and recharge. But if it is contaminated or if there has been a leak in the system, the refrigerant is covered. Cool. Usually at the cost that the contractor incurred. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, R22 is, uh, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool, man. Um, I, so I have a lot more questions, but in the sake, for the sake of, of respecting everybody's time, um, probably need to wrap things up here, but before I go, where is the best way for people to learn more about Trinity uh, warranty and, or connect with you guys? So uh, obviously you can come on our website. It's trinitywarranty.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can, if you, if you, you can call, obviously you, there's a number there and, or you can email us. Uh, I'd be happy to provide some emails if somebody wants to reach us, reach out to us directly, Tersh, and we'd be happy to answer any questions they may have. Uh, okay. You can get yeah. those for like the show notes and stuff yeah. like that. Put that yeah. down on the bottom. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll throw it up there and we'll be happy to, 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 to answer any, any questions. Uh, so trinitywarranty.com is our website. Uh, it's got you know several different ways you can reach out to us. There's a chat. There's a, there's a there's a contact us. There's our telephone number, so they can they can definitely reach out to us there. Uh, but yeah, that'd probably be the best way. And then okay. I'll, I'll throw some my information on the on the uh, comment section here uh, so that people have it. Uh, we do play. I just saw Cheryl uh, throw in there. Do you pay a reclaim allowance? So that was one of the one hour the additional hour that that I spoke to uh, that that you get. So that is for the reclaim. Um, okay. That's and also, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say that the uh, that this this devil in the details type thing because there's you know there's there's different warranty providers out there and knowing what is behind it like the, don't look at the the rate that might entice you on the front end like how long do you get for these repairs do you get extra time I think that's a I, I honestly I, I had no idea that's, <laughs> I, I didn't know any better. Uh, you guys took care of us when, when we use you, but, um, I didn't know any better when that stuff came. So I'm glad, hopefully somebody picks that up from this episode and mm -hmm. understands that stuff. So when they're compared, so they actually compare apples to apples versus apples to oranges. Sure. And, and one of the things to trip charge, like you mentioned, I mean, our standard program is basically the trip charge gets reimbursed at the same amount of your late as your labor rate. So if someone is picking $125, labor reimbursement program per hour, the trip charge would be 125. Now, okay. you know, we can also customize a program where they can they say, well, I don't need $125 for a trip charge. We can customize it and make it 75. Okay. So like you said, it's uh, our standard product is basically the trip charge is mirroring the labor rate, but it can be customized. And that's a very good point because there's other companies that may they pay the 125 an hour, but mm -hmm. their trip charge is only 75 or 85. Oh, yeah. That's so awesome. we got ask ask lots of questions uh, to make sure. Yeah, that reach out if you guys clarity. if you guys need clarity. Reach out. Yeah. Compare these things. Go deeper on these questions if you need to. These are great questions. I appreciate anyone that that jumps in yeah. these live streams and stuff and asks questions because that it helps us to kind of guide what you want to learn about. So we appreciate mm -hmm. that. 
hundred percent. Gus and, and Rich, we really appreciate you coming on the show and taking some time and spending with us and answering all the ridiculous questions that I have anyways. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Well, we'll be happy to do a Absolutely. sequel if you get a million questions about it. All right. That sounds good. That sounds great. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> See you. Likewise. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.